What is up guys, Sad Dad Plays and Predicts and welcome back to another FPL video. And if you enjoy my content, please hit that subscribe button because if I'm being honest with you, I wasn't in the mood of making this video. Not obviously because of the content itself, because you can tell by my FPL points I managed to get 32 points. And let's check, let's just double check the average. The average was 48. 12 points below the average. This was probably my worst FPL game week in my whole life. I've been playing FPL for maybe four years now. This was my worst one. So you can tell that I wasn't, I was the least excited for this. Especially because I have the one year I get my worst score, I have to upload it to YouTube and talk about. But you know what? I, I gotta still explain to you guys because believe it or not, my FPL videos are actually the most popular, like in terms of views, like categories, you know what I mean? Like my FIFA videos, my Game Week prediction videos, my Fall Guy videos, FPL videos, FPL videos get the most views, so I still gotta produce quality content, and I will still do that, doesn't mean we have one bad game week, I'll explain to you not what not to do. So, I mean, I'm saying the same thing as last week, <laughs> uh, what went wrong, so I'm just gonna say like this, let's get into our what went wrong, our WWWs, our 3Ws. So I'm going to have match Ryan. Man, I was so annoyed with this. Brighton were so close to a clean sheet. Let me check the minute West Brom scored. I promise it was it wasn't even it was very late, I'm sure. I checked my phone, I was pissed. Let me just find the game. Um It was one one that game, no bonus points sadly. Match Ryan still yet to keep a clean sheet since that West Ham game. That is annoying. Yes, they conceded late, didn't they? Brighton was 83rd minute. They managed to concede to a Grant. I don't know how to pronounce his name. It's probably Grant, but who cares? Who cares? And that was mad annoying because, as I said before, it was, he's only kept one clean sheet this whole season. I thought I had like a proper goalkeeper differential in terms of like people had maybe Nick Pope, McCarthy, um, I don't know how to pronounce his name either, but MacArthur is when I got. He's kept three out of four clean sheets, so that's maybe one I want to look at. But I'm going to stick with Ryan for now, and even though he has Spurs next, I don't want to waste a transfer on a 4.5 goalie. 4.5, get me two points, I guess I'm happy. I mean, against Spurs, obviously, not against West Brom. Um, another one I'm pissed off, Mitchell. They managed to concede. I'm gonna speak for these two. To these two, Crystal Palace, Townsend Mitchell. Last minute, I thought I had the clean sheet for sure. So they went 2 0 up. Fulham got the red card. 90 plus fifth minute, they managed to score a banger from like half court. I was so annoyed. That denied me. Potentially some Mitchell bonus points, maybe seven. De denied me maybe 10 points from those players. I ended up getting four. Denied me 10. Maybe more for Mitchell if he decided to get more bonus points. And Townsend failed to get anything again. But I will keep him because I don't know. I have other tra good transfers in mind. Plus, who wouldn't mind a bit of Friday night football? If you guys didn't know, there's some more Friday. There's Friday night football today. We have Wolves Crystal Palace. So I'll be excited for that one. Especially because I have two Palace assets in my team. Uh, but let's go back to the um, defenders. Dinier. Another one, I think it was a bit unfair for the red card. Very unfair. It wasn't a red card for sure. It wasn't a red card. Managed to get minus two. Not more, I can say there. Probably going to get removed off the team. But, just saying, guys. I moved Digne off my team. Because I thought he wouldn't play for three game weeks straight. Turns out, it's been reduced to one game. But that was yesterday night, so I didn't really know. I made my transfer as soon as he got a red. I was kind of pissed. Bellerin, one point again, very, very pissed. He could have scored a goal, actually, I swear. Um, uh, David Luiz played the ball, and he was right in front of the keeper, but he couldn't get his footing, and Johnny Evans came with, like, a Van Dijk tackle and, like, pushed the, the ball off him. He was right in front of the keeper with, like, a volley. If you guys saw that game, I was so... And he had... Oh, and he had another one. Aubameyang crossed the ball into him. He had a volley. That's what Michael was saying. So Bellerin could have scored in two occasions, so I'm keeping him, I'm keeping him. Um, Barnes, can't say I wasn't, like, expecting it, I mean, I didn't, I was, he was playing my team, Arsenal, he, he, he barely even touched the ball, like, <laughs> I, I don't know 
to say about Barnes. It's like watching a four-year-old play football because a four-year-old wouldn't touch the ball either. Barnes didn't touch the ball either. So what's the point in Barnes? And I mean, I meant to benefit you guys also, not just rant about my team. So I'd say if anyone wants to get Barnes, actually, let me change my mind about he could potentially get points. He has easy fixtures coming. So I would say maybe, I, I, I want to say he's one to look at that. For a differential, neither is the person next to him, Townsend. <laughs> Not at all, man. Since I've got him, he hasn't got one point. Not one. I mean, <laughs> not any contributions, if you know what I mean. Not even a three pointer that he should have got, but they managed to score a 95th minute goal. So, <laughs> Bruno Fernandez, another one I was pissed off about. Barely had anything in the game. He had like that pass to Marcus Rashford. Could have gotten an assist, but Mendy came with that brilliant save. So not much to say there either. It's playing Arsenal next game, which is uh, very annoying because I don't like players playing. That's my team that I support because I I want to get more FPL points. You know what I mean? But it's so annoying when I have an FPL player from the other team and my team is playing. I want. I'm gonna keep Bruno Fernandes. I'm just, I don't want to spoil anything, but I'm gonna keep him and. Uh, and uh, I, I, well, how do I say it without offending? I won't basically, I won't, I don't want to say anything, but I won't give, um, I don't, I don't, I won't care about him. I'll even, I'll forget he's even playing. That's the point of it. So come next week, I will have nothing to say about Bruno Fernandez. Score, assist, blank, I will have nothing to say about him because I don't care about Bruno Fernandez. Next to him, son, very proud of him. I mean, I'm speaking like a father. <laughs> no, that's a bit cringy. Very proud of him. What am I saying? Happy for the 11 points for from a lucky header. I'm pissed about this one because Spurs could have got a, could have, weren't supposed to get the three points from there. They decided to score a lucky header and I managed to get 11 points from Sun. I know it me a bit more. I would have preferred the Spurs draw than 11 points from Sun. You could say Sun saved my game week. If you think about it this way, the only people who got <laughs> points were the two Spurs players, Sun and Kane. Ah, uh, this was a terrible game week. I don't even want to speak about it anymore. Let's just get over Abamian. Um, Abam, Abamian, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's staying with the next game. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's get into the next one. We talked a lot of, about the Bamiyan. Let's get into the front two. Kim, um, decent. Kava Tuin, crap. Oh, oops. sorry. <laughs> sorry, I was not meant to say that. Um, Kava Tuin, it was bad. Kava Tuin was bad. Didn't watch the game, but that's it for my um, game week six review. And let's get into the game week seven review. So this is my game week seven team. Is it game week seven or eight? Man, things are going fast this year. Forgotten which game week. Every week I have the same thing. Game week seven, game week seven. So this is my game week seven team. The team that hopefully will make my life a bit better because <laughs> my life wasn't good last week. Arsenal lost. I got so many stuff wrong in my predictions and my FPL team was an absolute disaster. Probably one of the worst YouTubing weeks so far. Let's call it that. I mean, this year so far. What am I saying? Corona happened and I'm talking about how Arsenal lost. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, let's just let's just get into the team. I'm being a bit ridiculous here, but let's get into the team. Matt Ryan and Gold. Don't expect anything from him. But come next week, I'm still gonna um, I'm still gonna be pissed about him. I don't expect anything from him. He's playing Tottenham. I mean, if you guys saw my prediction video, I I predicted them to concede goals. Not a lot, obviously. Maybe I could. I'm, I'm not gonna spoil anything. Go check out the game of prediction. But let's get into this video. I mean, keep switching the subject in this video. I don't know what's happening. I I just the frustration of FPL right now. I can't take it. I keep switching it, and it's not even because I want to. It's just my mind telling me. Let's, let's get into some positives. Dine out, chill well in. I think Chilwell is really, really like he, he's he's sleeping under people's radars. I think that's how I say it. He managed to get twenty-seven points in his last three FPL games. If you tell me that's 
That's amazing, basically. And it's, um, against a Bernie side who can't score goals, would rather... Bernie are probably looking in the streets for someone to score goals from them for them. So, Sherwood is a good option. He could keep a clean sheet. I mean, I think they will keep a clean sheet at that game. And I think he could get in the end of those assists and goals. So, I am very excited to um, have Chilwell. You know, I was so excited I was going to put him captain. But I think I was a bit dumb. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. I keep switching. So, what is happening with me? It's FPL. They better these... These... Let's call them men. These men better get me points. Look at me. I'm a mess. I'm an absolute mess. <laughs> Bellerin, Man United away. Can Bellerin finally get a goal? I mean, a glass comfortable. I mean, if he gets an assist, I'll be mad happy. If he gets a goal, I'll be mad happy. Clean sheet, mad happy. So I think Bellerin is a very good option. It's one sleeping under people's radars as well. Mitchell, clean sheet, please. Points, assist, something from you, Mitchell, please. This is a differential. Barnes again, please, something from you. I need something from Barnes. Townsend, I need something from Townsend as well. I think that Townsend and Barnes aren't really I can this like I wouldn't rec recommend it for for anyone to get them because they have they obviously haven't been getting points, but things can change. Things can change quickly. If you're telling me to look around those if you wanna differential around those prices, I'll try to find someone for you around because it's also about benefiting you guys. Let's see. So, if you want to get someone, you could get Zaha. He's the man of five. But I wouldn't recommend to get him. Because if you're looking for a differential, like I said, you could probably get... There's Mason Mount. I don't think he will start. Even though the media is over-exaggerating with him and Lampard's relationship. I think... Um, there aren't really big options. Ross Barkley, he is one that you guys should get. I was thinking about getting him, but I don't really have the... If Ben Rama breaks into West Ham's side, I think he'll be a very good option. If West, if Ben Rama breaks into West Ham's side in the next few weeks, I'm going to get him in straight away. I admire Ben Rama as a player a lot. He is a very, very good player. I mean, I only watched him play two uh, three times, but he was a quality player when I watched him those three times so i would recommend getting him when he gets back on form there's trossard trossard is a very good one as well i'd recommend trossard because he is only owned by 2.1 percent of fpl managers matthias Pereira only owned by 2.6 percent that is mad that is mad and maybe if under as well breaks into leicester city squad who knows he is owned by 0.1 percent of managers think about that differential Really, really recommend it. Like, the only thing you need about FPL differential, if you don't want to watch my video, go ahead. You don't have to watch it. Just hit that subscribe button. And I'll give you some tips. You can just go onto FPL, and if you guys, I'm not sure if I'm getting on camera, but you can literally check if you want differential. You can literally check how much the percentage of the players picked. I'm not sure if you can see it. I can say somewhere there percentage of players picked, and it says like 0 0.1. So, if you guys want to do that, you can go onto FPL, do that. Uh, check the percentages. And it, it will, it's very helpful, especially for me. I mean, if you're on the wild card, I'd really recommend looking at the percentages used. When I wild carded, I looked at it. So, yeah, I really think that. Who else? Who else? So, when I was doing my wild card, I was looking at all these percentages. It really helps. I mean, <laughs> my wild card didn't go as planned as. Like as I hit 33 points last week, but it's still fine. It's still fine. More players. There aren't really a lot of options around Townsend and Barnes. Price so I wouldn't recommend really any. Pereira, Barkley, Benrahma if he breaks into a Sam side. Under same thing as Benrahma. Yeah, that's vice versa. Fernandez. This is a very interesting one. Sorry. Fernandez because obviously he's playing my team also I said I wouldn't focus on him at all. But I maybe, maybe potentially looking to swap out Fernandez for Rashford. Rashford is a big different differential at his price. Just scored the hat trick the other day and he is scoring goals for Man United. One no cheaper than Fernandez, that could be a very, very good option. But I haven't said 
that is the right option. I just said he could be a very, very good option. Son, everyone has him right now. It doesn't really make a difference at all. Aubameyang. Aubameyang could be a differential. If he starts bang on goals, he's a big differential. Because you need to remember, it isn't easy to transfer these big players in as soon as they hit form. You know what I mean? Aubameyang scores against United. There's going to be some big differentials for who people who trust with Aubameyang. I mean, I'm sure the only people who have Aubameyang in their squad now are Arsenal fans. I'm calling it from that. I am sure, 100% sure. If you're not an Arsenal fan, you don't have Aubameyang in your squad. But if he hits form, he scores some goals, all of you guys are screwed and uh, us Arsenal fans. Are. So there's some advantages coming from Aubameyang. That's why I will keep him. And I cannot have Arsenal's best player not in my FPL team. I'm being a bit biased in FPL, which is not working to my advantage so far, so far. The two up top, the two Englishmen, Kane and Kavatuan, both of them expected to score, really. I really expect both of them to score. As you saw in my game week, five predictions, I think. I actually said I was going to move Kane for Werner. That didn't work out because Dean got sent off. So, Dean, screw you, Dean. I could have got Werner in by now. But it's it's fine. I think Kane will receive points, but he isn't a differential as Werner because I don't think many people have Werner. So, Werner next week. Most probably. If no one decides to get a red card this week. But that is it for this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button. Yeah, that's it. Add that place and predicts out.